I did not think this is so weird. I did not think I'd be doing this kind of video right now in this time of my life. I thought I had some time. I thought I'd be moved out of this house by then. God, I want a new house and a million dollars before I have a kid. We do not care. Also, I don't want none of y'all in the comments talking about some, I knew it. I knew she was pregnant. Y'all thought I was pregnant so many other times and I wasn't. So, jokes on y'all. <laughs> guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome to my channel my name is Vicky um, obviously by the name of this title you know that this is me updating you guys on my pregnancy um, which sounds so weird to say because I have not recorded a pregnancy announcement yet because I am still like early on and I haven't announced to you guys yet so by the time y'all see this you will have known already I would have already announced it that I am pregnant um, with my first babe uh <laughs> it's my first time being pregnant for real for real i am a little excited a little bit nervous um but i did want to like update you guys on just what's been going on with my body like the changes and stuff i don't know if i like this top it's very low cut i'm going on a date tonight so i was trying to get ready already but this is a lot of chest it's a lot of chest out here I i'm tittying so that's one way you know <laughs> I'm gonna scoot up so that my TD's not all in frame. Okay. If you're new here or you don't know me and you're just here for the facts, you just want to know what are my symptoms and like what symptoms am I having if I am this early along or like are my symptoms the same as hers? Maybe you want to know that kind of stuff. I'm here. I got you. If you are a loyal follower, you've been following me for a while and you just want to know what's going on with me at this point in my pregnancy, um, I got you too. Currently, I am nine weeks and four days along my baby is the size of an olive um at this point in my pregnancy i have known that i've pregnant for only a week i've only been actually pregnant in my head for a week and a half um but my body has been pregnant for almost a full two months but by the time y'all see this i will probably have I'll probably be like four or five months maybe by the time I announce and there will be timestamps so you guys know where I start talking about the actual pregnancy symptoms and things like that but I just want to kind of get back to backtrack to where how we got here. Got my last period in May probably around mid-June was when I felt different it more so felt like my period coming like that's kind of what I felt. I remember being stressed. I was always under the impression that you can't get pregnant when you're stressed. I guess that's a lie. The past four or five months I've been extremely stressed, extremely anxious because it's like we're on the brink of a recession. The money kind of funny. Just worried about a lot of different things that I honestly felt like was not the best time to get pregnant. So it just so happens that that's the time that I get pregnant, which is wild to me because I really was not expecting it to happen around this time because a lot of you know that me and my husband have been trying we were trying for probably six years um there was one time where I did think I get I think I got pregnant and had an early miscarriage um I think that was in 26 2017 I want to say 2017 um in 2017 I started documenting a health journey where I was doing holistic care um I did some blood work um gave a hair sample and basically just learned about my body, what was going on, what was missing, why I wasn't getting a period because I wasn't getting a period at all. I was very underweight and very malnourished and I needed to figure out how to care for my body properly as an adult. I started taking supplements, I started eating more, I started um, kind of working out and just trying to be as healthy as possible so I could be at optimal health. So if you guys want to check that whole journey out. I have plenty of videos on that. Me talking about my period, me talking about my hormones, me talking about everything that was missing from my body and just working on getting my body in the best shape possible. Fast forward to 2020. That's when my husband started going to the doctor as well to get checked out and we learned about his body and what his body was missing. We learned about his um, testosterone and things like that and try to get him to the best optimal health as well. So he has, you know, perfectly supercharged swimmers that will be able to reach my eggs and fertilize them. Um, so we got him going with a supplement plan and a health plan. He was taking his stuff very, very regularly. Obviously that was during the pandemic, but Cam did not get sick. Not one time. He never got COVID. Um, you're not gonna talk about me. So I knew the supplements were really working for him. For me, I had to go through several different supplement regimens to really get the one that worked for me. I feel like I had kind of let go of trying to get pregnant 
and I was just kind of like, you know what it is, what it is, it'll happen when it'll happen. I'm really not focused on that anyway. I want to get a new house. There's a recession coming up. I'm trying to make some money. Just trying to set things up so that when we do get pregnant, we're in the house we want. We got the money that we need. That was my focus. I was not focused on having a kid this year. <laughs> we went to the doctor in April. She switched out my supplements. We did. I did another blood test. That was my second time doing a blood test since the first time. So the first time I did the blood test was in 2017. I did a second round of blood tests um, with my husband. So she switched out my supplements. When I took them, I felt like, yes, this is this is the combo because it felt good when I took them. Like I wasn't anxious at all. I wasn't feeling weird when I took them. Like it, my body had energy. I felt like everything she gave me this round was really good. Got new supplements. I started taking them immediately. Um, I was taking them very consistently, like every day for a couple weeks. We went in April to our doctor's appointment. May was my last period. June, I was pregnant. So I feel like obviously prayer and having a tribe of people praying for us heavily and God's timing had a lot to do with me getting pregnant. But I truly 100% believe that holistic health, holistic care is what got my hormones and Cam, Cam's hormones to be at optimal health so that we could produce and conceive naturally. I don't think we would have been able to do that had we not gone in and done the necessary work to get our bodies to optimal health. The past couple of years, I've changed a lot about my diet. I cut out a lot of gluten, tried to eat as many non-processed foods as possible. I cut out hot Cheetos. I cut out candles. I don't burn candles in my house no more. I got rid of all my toxic cleaning products. I only use clean body products. I mean, when I tell you, it probably is still some, but <laughs> for the most part, I tried to get rid of all the chemicals, all of the hormone disruptors, everything that was throwing my body off. I tried my best. I feel like all of that combined is what got us to where we are today, to where we could conceive naturally. And that is such a blessing. So first off, I want to say to anybody who is going through an infertility journey or if they're trying to be more fertile and trying to conceive, there are so many things in our society that are inhibiting us from getting pregnant. And whether you want to believe that or not, it is true. Everything that's in our food, in our products that we buy every single day, everything we touch, everything we breathe every day is full of hormone disruptors. And if you can get rid of as many of those, eliminate as many of those as possible, your chances will be higher. Number one, it starts with figuring out what your body actually needs and feeding your body and fueling your body the way it needs to be fueled. Number two, I would definitely say get rid of as many hormone disruptors as possible. I keep an earthing card on me to help me, um, to ground me and help with your body frequencies because the frequencies um, are being thrown off with 5G and all that stuff. I believe in all this stuff. I don't care if you don't believe it, I do. There is healing power in the earth. I believe God created a lot of stuff on this earth to help us heal from the inside out. So that's just my testimony. And and no disrespect, I say this with the I say this with the purest of heart because I love my friends who have done IVF and I love their stories. I love their journeys. I love how they prove that God can use science because I do believe God can use science. I do believe that wholeheartedly. I have plenty of friends who've done IVF and it worked for them. That's amazing. I knew for me and my journey, I started off my health journey believing that my body could heal itself and i was thoroughly convinced if i do everything i need to do to get my body to heal itself i will be able to conceive naturally that was my t that was what i believed for me and i believe me just having enough faith in that helped me to get there now does that mean everything's gonna go right and everything's perfect no number one i started going to the doctor in 2017 I mean, it's 2022. So clearly it took us like five years to get to where we are today. It took time, but I was patient. I wasn't rushing it. I didn't know when I wanted to have a baby. I just knew I wanted to be in the best shape possible and I wanted it to happen at a time where I was physically capable of doing it. There, There's a possibility that me doing everything right still didn't work and I would still have to do IVF. If I had to do it, I was gonna do it. But I told God, I said, Lord, you gonna have to come down to earth. Tell me directly to my face that I have to do IVF. He may still come down and tell me that. There's still a chance that that could happen. But I believed that this was the route he set me on. I wanted to stick to that route. I do not want by any means to diminish anybody else's story or say that my miracle is better than somebody else's because it's definitely not. It's just different. Yeah, it took me eight years of having sex unprotected, never used birth control in my life to get pregnant. If that's my story, cool. It still is a miracle outside of everything we did to prepare us ourselves for this moment. Pregnancy is such a miracle in and of itself, even if you're completely healthy and you have no issues getting pregnant, still 
the chances of you getting pregnant are not as high as people think they are. So every baby is a miracle. Every baby, there's so many things that can go wrong during pregnancy too. Every baby is a miracle, bro. A miracle. I started feeling pregnant around the drop shoot. I had an Amazon drop. I did a, a clothing collection with Amazon the drop. Um, and I had to shoot the clothing in June. So June the 16th, I believe, is the day we shot the drop, which was the most stressful day of my life. Our AC was out, so it was extremely hot in the house. It was like 90 degrees every day that week with humidity and everything, so it was so terrible. It was like 100 degrees in the house. I mean, it was hot. We couldn't sleep upstairs. We had to put an air mattress on the floor downstairs. It was a big deal. We had to get our AC fixed because we were going to Dallas the next day. So we had to get our AC fixed, had to wait for that. Then I had to do the drop shoot in the middle of the heat, in the middle of the day. It was just a lot going on. So I was super stressed out, super tired that day. But overall, I felt very like antsy and it wasn't just because of the drop shoot I knew I felt weird and I remember doing my makeup and looking at my face and I was like something's different I just feel different I just I felt it I knew so I think I got pregnant that week I just could tell that something was not something was off about me we went to Dallas we flew to Dallas to surprise my dad for Father's Day and that weekend we were staying with our friends Wanda and Lo who have miracle twins uh, they also did IVF again and they have another baby on the way um, so we're pregnant at the same time which is really cool I'm pregnant with one of my best friends at the same time. That's awesome. Uh, she had the end of her pregnancy, so she's gonna be done before I finish. We went to their house that weekend, um, right after the drop shoot. So I was still working on drop stuff when I got to their house, which was in the vlog. If you haven't seen that vlog, I'm gonna put it up here. But um, I didn't know I was pregnant, but I was pregnant then. But I knew something was different. Cause when I went to their house, normally kids don't like me. I'm, here's the thing. Yes, I am happy that I am pregnant. And yes, I am happy that I'm having a child. However, I don't like kids. And it's always this juxtaposition uh, in my head of feelings. It's always like this conundrum, if you will, of like, I want kids, but I don't like them. Kids don't normally like me. I don't normally like them. I let them mind their business. I mind my business. I stay off their business. But for some reason, Wanda's kids were all over me. The twin And the boys are usually not that enthralled with me like I've been around them before and they don't normally care that I'm there this time around they were all over me Kay was holding my hand the whole time he wanted to hold my hand like all day Kai was like singing with me and like smiling at me every time he saw me and I'm just like what what's going on with you guys like why are we friends right now then our other friends who also had an IVF baby um Manny and Tia they came over the house and spent some time with us we got to hang out I got to meet their baby who they just they just had a baby a year ago he was all over me too and I'm like okay what's going on here I didn't really think a whole lot of it I was kind of like just weird babies don't normally like me they like me today I don't know maybe I look cute to them I don't know the week after that I missed my period I was supposed to get my period that weekend um that we went to Dallas missed it didn't really think much of it because I my periods typically vary in time frame which is normal it's normal for you to have a varying period times so it's not abnormal for me to miss my period I've missed my period before like I'm used to that so if I miss it it's probably because I'm stressed or I don't know probably because I ain't been eating enough because I wasn't eating a lot and I, I was really stressed so I was like it could just be stress it could be a number of things I wasn't really worried about it that week and the week after which was the week of the 4th of July I remember being so irritable we had a cookout with our family and I was so irritable I could not be around people like I had to lay down take a nap and then when I went back outside everybody was having their little cookout fun I was sitting out in the trees somewhere by myself I didn't want to say anything I did not want to be on my phone I didn't want to be on social media I was literally just sitting there in the trees just like mentally drained I guess I don't know I mean I'm anti-social but I'm, not, I'm normally not that antisocial. I was very antisocial that day. Week five is when I started noticing symptoms and that's when I was like okay something's going on because I still ain't got my period yet and I'm having period symptoms but they're stronger than period symptoms because normally when my period's coming I'll be moody and irritable and I'll crave like chocolate or salty stuff sometimes but this was different. Week five I had an obsession with salsa. When I when I tell you the salsa upset I bought two jars of salsa any of you know me personally you know I'm not a snacker like that I don't snack okay I like meals and I like to go out to eat normally at home I'm starving because I'm not eating at home like that bro when I tell you I had a whole bag of chips and a whole jar of salsa in a couple days and anytime we went out to eat I'm like I want Mexican food so I can get some salsa 
I, it was weird and I'm like I never like salsa this much. I like salsa but not this much. This week was also the week of the Amazon drop. So this was after 4th of July. A couple days later was the Amazon drop which was a very high energy highly emotional and stressful day for me because it was just so much going on and everybody was texting me and calling me it was just so much it was very overwhelming for me i passed out halfway through the day because i was like i can't even stay awake i'm so stressed and like it was a good stress but it was just so much going on it was doing really well and i was like just happy the night after the drop happened we went to out to eat and i was just not my stomach was hurting because i was like i had the bubble guts i mean i want to throw up i was just like oh this is just so much for me so much attention so much so many texts so many calls so many messages it was just a lot so i was trying to process it all and couldn't really get a grip and we went to the movies that night with lexus and her friend and me and cam were both knocked out tired i also i believe i started having trouble sleeping through the night after the drop number one i was hot i was sweating through my clothes and i'm like Okay, normally my my when my period's coming, I get hot. This is a different level of heat. Like I am hot. Week six, I rested, took a break from Instagram for a week after the drop because I was very overwhelmed and tired and needed to just kind of gather my thoughts. I really couldn't process what was going on because it was all happening so fast. During the break, I never really recharged. I was sleeping a lot, taking a lot of naps, but I was still like sweating in my sleep, having weird dreams, having a hard time like sleeping through the night. But during the day, I would be just knocked out. I would get in the car, knocked out, and wanting salty stuff. The salsa craving turned into just salt. Like, I just needed salt. When I tell you I was shaking tahine in my hand and licking it, and I wanted pickles. I love pickles. I'm from Texas. We ate pickles growing up just to eat them. You would soak them in Kool-Aid and eat them like that. So pickles was not like an abnormal snack for me but for me to have to put them in my purse because every time i woke up from a nap or like every time i was going somewhere on the way somewhere i just wanted some pickles it was weird one day we were in the car and i asked cam if they make salty mints i was like do they make mints that are salty i think at that point he knew he was like bro what you want what a salty mint to this day that still sounds good i would i would have one now week seven is when i realized something was off because i still hadn't gotten my period yet the salty cravings was through the roof i was tired i'm like my titties is kind of tittying they're not abnormally huge but for me they were getting big um i felt a tiny bit of nausea on that sunday and i was gassy so i drank some kombucha in the car and i remember taking a picture of the kombucha i have that picture it's weird how I was documenting things and not even knowing. I was drinking kombucha in the car and remembering feeling a little nauseous going to church. Um, I was very sleepy and antisocial still. Just had an attitude, didn't want to talk to nobody. I don't think I talked at all when we went out to eat after church that day. I was just really tired. That Tuesday, we I had an appointment downtown, so me and Cam went and we were sitting in the car and I remember saying to him, I turned and looked at him and I said to him, there's a small, microscopic, very tiny, very minuscule chance that I'm pregnant. But I don't know yet. I didn't get the feeling that I normally get when my period's about to come. I get to the phase where I'm about to get my period and I start really like being emotional and like pouring my feelings out to Cam and I really like him and I'm really like attracted to him on my period. And like I just want him to hold me and cuddle me. And I'm like, for some reason, like I don't like you. And I know normally I like him. So for me to not like him, I'm like, something's off, bro. There's might be a small chance. I'm just noticing the signs. Have you noticed my titties a little bigger? And he's like, yeah, I've been noticed your titties look a little good. And I'm like, okay, thank you because I've been seeing it too. There's a small chance. I'm not taking a test though. I told him this. I said, I'm not taking a test. I told myself back in 2019, 2018, 2019, I told myself I'm never taking a test again until I know for sure that I'm pregnant because I don't want to keep putting myself through that disappointment of seeing the test and seeing that it's negative and then being like oh my god okay yet again my body's doing something weird and I'm not pregnant you know but because period symptoms and pregnancy symptoms are so similar it was hard for me to really know but when I told him that I was like I feel like I might be but I don't want to guess and I don't want to like think that I am and I'm not so in order to protect my feelings I did not take a test a couple days later I was really that week I was hungry girl that week that's when I started realizing okay something's up because I was hungry like not hungry hungry with an O snacking a lot which I normally don't do salty cravings were super strong and so I bought a pregnancy test that Friday and I was like, all right 
I can't, I, I gotta, I gotta know. I gotta know. So I took the test Friday and I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm gonna go get the test just to show y'all what the idiocracy. You'll see this in the vlog. You've probably already seen it in the vlog if I have it, if I have uploaded it already. Um, but I did vlog it. I was like, all right. The first time I took the test, I didn't vlog. So I, I bought the clear blues and um, this was the first test I took. And if you, as you can see, it's really old. So hopefully it still looks the same. But that line, the dark line, that line is actually the pregnant line. <laughs> and the line that's faint underneath there is the control line. I was thinking that because the line was faint, that it wasn't a plus sign, that it was just the negative sign, but it was turned this way. That's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, that's negative. I looked at it like this. I was like, okay, that's negative because it's one line. The other line, the control line hadn't really come in yet. So I'm like, cool. The other line is faint. I'm not pregnant, threw it in the garbage. The next morning, I was feeling a little weird still. And I was like, maybe I didn't look at the test right. Something ain't right. So I looked at the instructions that were inside the box and it basically was telling me that, that the dark line is the pregnant line. Um, and that if there was a faint line and, and a dark line, that meant that it was positive. So I looked up some other videos and stuff to see, and other people were saying that these tests, these clear blue tests can sometimes read false positives or false negatives. So I took another one and showed my sister. They're both, they both came back with the dark line. Showed my sister, I called her. I said, Lex, what do you think about this? Does this look positive to you? She's like, yeah, girl, you're pregnant. And I'm like, no that ain't right so i ordered <laughs> that saturday was the day of her birthday party cam was golfing i ordered another set of tests i actually ordered the clear blue digital and they ended up giving me the first response digital with the pink top which i heard these are the best ones they're not active anymore because the battery died but cam wants to keep them forever um but i got these because they're digital and they say yes or no so you know for sure i was like i need to see something say yes or pregnant to my face tell me to my face don't talk behind my back don't give me no shady lines i need to see the words give me the words okay i'm going through all my symptoms on camera and i'm just kind of like okay i mean it, this is weird but and then i looked at the test and it said positive so confirmed all of my feelings i took both digital ones so i could just have all of them and they all said pregnant um saturday i was very nauseous and very hungry the next day after i told cam when i tell you i was so nauseous the next morning oh my god my stomach was hurting so bad and i realized it's because i didn't eat anything before church and normally i don't eat anything so we have long mornings but i didn't eat anything i was super nauseous i felt like i was gonna throw up i went to the bathroom and pooped and I still felt like I was gonna throw up. I couldn't stop pooping. It was just a lot of nausea. I didn't throw up though. I never threw up. I still haven't thrown up. But week eight was the start of the nausea for me. Week eight, I also got the first ultrasound and heard the heartbeat. Ooh, wow. Um, for the first time, and it was just the first look. So we really didn't get any like um, medical things done. We just got the heartbeat which um, we have this little lamb that they put the heartbeat in. It's our little fur baby, um, and it has a little heartbeat in it. It sits on Cam's desk, but she's gonna sit there for now. She or he, we don't know yet. Very sleepy still, very hungry, very thirsty. I think I was eating everything, anything and everything in sight. I was going to the store multiple times a week, getting more food, because I just couldn't stop eating. Like I had to keep eating because if I didn't eat, I would get nauseous. So instead of getting hungry, like a hungry feeling, I would just get a nauseous feeling. So in order to like curb the nausea, when I wake up in the morning, I cannot skip breakfast. I had to wake up, eat. I would drink some ginger tea, um, drink enough water, take my supplements. Um, and typically if I ate enough, I'd be okay. But at first I was trying to still be like really healthy. So I was eating a lot of fruit eating a lot of nuts and, and berries, trying to eat vegetables and, and, you know, chicken, things like that. I was just trying to eat really good and like wholesome meals, you know, trying to like make sure I'm not giving myself extra gas or nothing like that. But once week nine hit, the nausea just kept coming up and like I wasn't throwing up at all. It was just like I would wake up feeling nauseous and I would feel nauseous throughout the most of the day. I need more food to kind of fill me up because I, I can't just keep snacking every hour on the hour and then expecting to not get hungry again because I'm not eating enough. So every couple hours, I'm like, I need a whole meal. I don't really have any food aversions and I don't really have any cravings per se. I just know when I want something to eat, I want it. 
and it's never really the same thing every time it's more so just like i just want food i don't care what it is just give me food so i've been eating a lot of protein and carbs every morning i probably eat four slices of turkey sausage um two eggs um, I've been eating cream of wheat again because cream of wheat has folic acid and iron in it, but it also is filling. Um, I've been trying for the most part for the past couple years, I've been trying to cut back on gluten. All that is out the window at this point. I'm eating all the gluten, girl. So I've been eating bread. I've been eating a lot of carbs, noodles, cream of wheat, pasta, rice, pizza, just a lot of carbs. I feel like the more carbs I have, the less nausea I feel. So the past two to three days, I haven't really felt much nausea at all because I've been eating a ton of carbs. Cream of wheat in the mornings has been awesome, especially when the earlier I eat it, the better. Um, so I've been getting up at like 7 a.m., 8 a.m. and making breakfast for myself. Trying to drink as much water as possible, but I'm still always thirsty all the time. So I'm always drinking water and or drinking something some kind of fluid to flush my system because i've been having a hard time pooping the past two three weeks i've been very constipated and gassy so just trying to get the poop out um has been a task for me but i am trying and some days i have really good poops other days not so much there have been a couple of days where i didn't poop at all and that those were really not good days for me because i just felt heavy those have been my symptoms um just really trying to eat a lot. And you know, one of the things I thought that I was going to struggle with when I got pregnant, because this is one of the things that I struggle with when I'm not pregnant, is eating enough. Eating enough and drinking enough water, I thought that I wasn't going to be able to do that when I got pregnant. I thought, man, I don't know how I'm going to maintain eating a lot throughout the day because I, I don't, I just don't get hungry like that. Girl, I'm so hungry all the time. I literally woke up this morning, made some cream of wheat and some eggs. I ate that for breakfast. Two hours later, I was ordering a pizza. And that same thing happened to me the other day. I ate noodles and company before church around six. Went to church. After we got out of church, I had a whole pizza. And those have been the best days for me. When I eat that much, it's been the best because I don't get nauseous. My body has literally just been telling me, eat girl, eat. So I've been eating a lot. I, I haven't skipped a beat, honestly. I, I'm very proud of myself. It's, it's shocking to me because I never feel full. So I just keep eating. Your body tells you what it needs. And if you can't, if you don't get it fast, there will be problems. So I just try to listen to my body and do what it says. It took me some time to kind of like figure out how I felt about this because at first the initial cry that I cried was like a shocked cry. It was like a anxious anxiety panic attack kind of cry it wasn't like an excited or happy cry it was like oh my god what is happening cry there was no feeling in that cry it was more so just like a shook um and then for a few days i was like i don't know what to do with myself i don't know what to do to start thinking about what we're gonna do i don't know what to do when i first find things out i'm just shocked like i don't have a happy sad excited mad angry i don't feel those feelings when something happens to me in the moment i don't feel those feelings i just feel shocked and then over time i process my emotions so that was me for the first week but then after that week i was like dang i'm pregnant what has been fun is pretending like i'm not pregnant and getting mocktails and making people think that they're actual cocktails with alcohol in them when they're not that's been really fun yeah other than eating and sleeping i haven't had time for much else so far it's not completely enjoyable yet i would like to not be nauseous but once that part is over and I don't have to worry about it, that would be really great. Waking up every morning stressed about what I'm going to eat so that I don't get sick is not really fun for me. But otherwise, it's been fine. Um, I'm not really showing yet. I think I'm just bloated. Um, I don't really have like a belly belly. This is just my regular stomach. But when I do start showing, I'll be sure to give you guys a bump update. Yeah, for the most part, that's it. Um, I just wanted to give you guys my update for my first trimester. I'll probably circle back once I go to the doctor and hear the heartbeat for the second time and have more of an update. We get to find out what the sex of the baby is probably around 14 weeks I think so about four weeks from now which I don't really care. At this point a healthy baby is all I care about. Like I could go my whole pregnancy not knowing whether it was a girl or a boy and I probably wouldn't I wouldn't be antsy about it like I I don't care. Even with like thinking about okay like a nursery like what what colors do you want to do like blah 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 i'm not concerned about that either because i don't want traditional baby colors so i mean 
I don't care. Um, we're working on names. We're not really sure yet because it took us really long time to have kids. So all of our baby names are taken. So we're just going to have to get really creative, um, which is cool. Shout out to everybody who named their baby what we wanted to name our babies, but it's fine. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It was informative to you. I will be sure to update you guys on the next trimester and how that goes. So yeah, see you guys in my next video.